we arrived to the most adorable and it has so much like wonderful art so the glare but that is some kind of indian weapon um charming charming apartment so quintessential british with lots of memorabilia and books and photographs of history and this is a painting that Anne just was here to let us in and this is a wonderful painting done by a student from London uh you know her, her school and um of Sam the man who has this apartment so Sam it used to be I guess in the British army and um is Anne's mother's boyfriend but you see how there's all these pictures from travels and history and um yeah you know, it's just so lovely so there's so much to look at here you know tapestries from afghanistan it looks like there is an a second bedroom wow lovely and then there's a downstairs bathroom and then the kitchen and our bedroom is up here and there's just maps and you know costumes from afghanistan and 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 like um crosses from ethiopia she's a delight i love she showed up in the most wonderful outfit so she said that this necklace is from afghanistan isn't this a fun so this is the kitchen you know and we look out over um I guess Lavender Hill, that's the um, street. You know, I just, I just love when things have a lot of character and look lived in. Photographs of his life. Look at, the, how, look at this window in this doorway. And he, um, oh, this is like the regiment. So these are all the photographs. Oh, and look at, that's him right there. I just love it. Oh yeah, look at these. That's him right there. So you get to look, oh, Colonel Sam Coleridge. I'm gonna have to um, Google his family because she said that, um, I guess maybe one of his um, relatives was a famous poet. And you know, I guess, you know, way back, this is another bathroom right there. I thought this was a, a pretty nice drawing. So I don't know if it's, by one of his relatives or of one of his relatives. Anyways, so much. I mean, honestly, I, I didn't expect much. And I guess this is a door that leads down to the like, back stairs. It's always nice to have a beautiful carpets too. You can tell that he's probably gotten those on trips. Okay, right across from a art center and um, I guess the school is just a few blocks that way. So this is life. I love it. It's so fun. It's so much funner than just staying in a generic place. We just visited the art school and she told us about walking down to Battersea Park. And it's a little bit of a walk, but we've enjoyed the old buildings and we're just about to get to Battersea Park. And I saw this, Spiritualist Association of Great Britain. Okay, 341 Queenstown Road. Demonstrations of mediumship. Walk in spiritual healing clinics. Oh, and private sittings daily. Interesting. Rosary Gate to Battery Battersea Park. I think we're gonna sit down here for a while. I assumed I'd be in better shape after a week of walking, but I'm t getting too old. Look at this adorable little lodge. Can you see it? The light. Sometimes the light flares make it so that there's like this light, you know, cast over the video. Oh, see if I was smart, I would know to do that. <laughs> This is an actual fantasy of mine. We just had an amazing Thai dinner 
we come back and I'm watching Escape to the Country, my favorite British show where people find country homes in England, in an apartment in London. I mean, I just don't know what to say. It's so fun. Bus ride. We're on bus 87. It met right in front of our little apartment, and it's a gorgeous drive. To visit. We just passed the Tate, and um, the perfect bus to, to go see museums. Oh, Scott's giving advice about galleries. security because in movies and TV shows it always looks like there's no security out front. I mean like literally anyone could go knock on the door. Do you watch, have you watched uh, Black Mirror? Oh, yeah. Is that where your friend did his paintings? Yeah. He did really good. Wow, look at that. just walked into the portrait gallery and let me tell you there was a huge line and they were told that if you had tickets you go to the right if you don't have tickets you go to the left and so I frantically bought something online but you don't have to do not believe because I even did the tickets and um, then they didn't even look at them so if you're going to the portrait gallery just walk right in there's a line that was to the right that was going really fast and then the line to the left was just waiting there for no reason. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Who did this? Oh, this is Sir John Lavery. We decided to go on the second floor because it just wasn't as crowded. This museum has been closed for a few years, so I think it's just a mad rush for people to see it. And um, probably would be best to go later in the day. This is John Everett Millet. Wow, okay, this, there's a lot in here. 
I'll give you a quick little view here and then I'll only do some close-ups of paint. Oh, here's a John Singer Sargent. Unfortunately, it's behind glass. Um, so it might be a little bit hard to see. This is a painting of James Joyce by Jacques Emile Blanche. It's pretty nice. It's done in 1935. This particular painting is not behind glass. So maybe the more, you know. Wait, no, it is. I'm mistaken. That's funny. You can only tell when you go to the left. I thought it was just a shiny varnish. Okay. All right, I'm mistaken. There is such a, an interesting green tone to the whole painting. You can see that. I wonder if he painted it on a green background. I think a lot of times when this is in books, it's usually in the back of a book. So this is General Officers of World War I, done in 1922 by Sergeant. Very thin. It is interesting because you can tell that some of the lighting is different. For the most part, all the lighting is the shadows are on the right. But that particular guy right there, his, his lighting is more from above. And even over here, the shadows are from on the right. And it's fascinating how simple he does these. I mean, they all have the same coloring. What a big job this is. Yep. It's pretty big. This is a painting of Henry James by John Singer Sargent, done in 1913. It's amazing. I mean, look at that vest. It probably looks tight in the video, but in person, it is so loose. Scott and I went to a free day, muse you know, in museum in, in Madrid, and it's just a, it's it's actually nice to know that museums are so popular, and that people, you know, they crave art, right? So it's a reminder that art is important, that should be supported. Um, we take it for granted, and and Ruth was upset because that painting, one of her favorites, is so high. And it's, this one's low and that one's high. It's like, who's thinking? Who's doing this stuff? You know? Oh, here's a Boldini. I videoed a whole show of Baldini from Paris last year, so you can go back to that video and um, see lots. It was a huge retrospective of his work at the Pitti Palace. 
Oh, there's a sergeant. Of course, it's behind glass. So this is, um, this was done in 1908. It's gonna be difficult to get a good shot of this. Can you imagine doing a life-size painting like this? I mean, it, honestly, I think he elongated him. No, he definitely did. It, it, this guy is definitely more elongated than a normal human. Okay, now, but that's what he did to make people look impressive and if you're gonna do a huge painting, you know. So let's see if I can see it from a corner here. Yeah. So nice to turn the corner and just see a sergeant. We're in a darker room, so my flash is turning on, which is annoying. I do love the designs in these paintings. This is definitely the most popular room. So this is King Edward VI. They don't know who the painter is. 1537 to 1553. lovely though I'm kind of getting into like um, you know paintings that are maybe one-dimensional or I don't know should I use the word flat I don't know oh that's interesting this thing is like the illusion very 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 dark room I'm nervous that my flash will come on in any minute Henry the Eighth and Henry the Seventh. Now this looks more like a almost like a, a watercolor or ink and more like a drawing. Oh yeah, I know. I know, it's fun to see the frames in, in museums and, and wish someday we could put our paintings in. So this is Queen Elizabeth I, unknown artist. Oh my God, can you imagine? You're just like a peasant and you just get, probably hardly even get paid. So this is in the 1500s, famous painting. Mary Queen of Scots, unknown artist. This is actually kind of nice. I guess um, unknown artist. Hmm. 1500s. All these tiny little scenes of the person talking to people and having having dinner parties. Fun.
Look at those hands. Like they don't have bones. So fascinating. It's like the face has bones, but the hands don't. Actually kind of a nice drawing. Interesting expression. This was done in um, 1604. Amazing. I love the um, painting in the background on the wall. It's hard to see. Sorry, spotlights. Nemesis for filming paintings. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, so this is a self-portrait. I guess you can scan the barcode and hear more about it. Painted, they say, about 1640. It's amazing to, like, paint yourself, like, looking over your shoulder. That is cool. There are so many rooms in this museum that it's confusing, but doesn't this just look like those old-fashioned salons that you would see? I mean, obviously you can't even look at what's high, but Scott wanted me to see this. So this is a self-portrait by Joshua Reynolds. Could you imagine holding your hand up like that? But look at that nose, wow. Yep. So this was done. Well, it says he was alive 1723 to 92. So it looks like he's young. That is pretty good. I mean, there's absolutely no way you can see those paintings above. They're just like decoration. One's kind of famous. I've seen that one before. Oh, okay. We left the portrait uh, museum and Ruth is taking us to Panther and Hall Fine Art. This is a beautiful gallery. I've never seen black walls. It makes everything very dramatic. This is their downstairs space. These are nice. Oh, it's weird, the lights are flickering. This looks, yeah, it has a little bit of a feeling of like Dan McCaw. I like this stuff. Cool. Oh, I guess people can kind of just come down the stairs. That's interesting. This circle frame on the square background. Mm -hmm. Fun. Seeing art galleries in London. Now Ruth took us to um, Wiggins? No, yeah, I don't know. Fine Art Commissions. And this is where Jamie Corrath, we just saw his painting at the uh, National Portrait where he did of um, well, I guess uh, Prince William and Kate, and um, 
Society of London Art Dealers. All right, this is a fancy. We've 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 passed some fancy galleries. So this is uh, right on the corner of Bury Street and Ryder Street. That is Ruth's painting. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, great. Oh my gosh. It's lovely, isn't it? It is gorgeous. I don't think I've seen this one. Wow. I have to get back a little bit. Yeah, it comes down here if you like. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, we're moving things around. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I visited uh, Henrietta yesterday. Oh, how was that? It was lovely. I popped yeah. in for a cup of tea. And this was nice. Yeah, Jamie Cora. Cora. <laughs> oh, that's so great. we never met in person before. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a picture. Oh, yeah, Dad sculpting. Um, that's that's his father as a sculptor. Well. That's fun. I like all the figurines back there. Yes, I must meet Simon. Yeah. Oh, you haven't met? No. Yeah, shame. I've seen that one. I've yeah. seen this one before. I know an artist, but they're and kind of beautiful little still yeah, life. Oh, portrait yeah, gallery yeah. continues yeah. downstairs. Oh, I love how they look like this. The yeah. rope. So uh, um, old fashioned. Yes, Very tiny little place, yes, but and can you good. imagine the, the rent? Perfect. No, I can't Obviously, even. I was, I, when you sent me the images, I was like, that was Wow, oh, some big pieces down here. Oh, this is the one that we saw at the Portrait Society. Oh, yeah. And I think he got like fourth place, or I can't remember what prize he got. But yeah, I really liked it. Really fun how he made his clothes like flat and even the sculpture's face kind of undone. And then the graphic nature. Yeah, the graphic nature. Well, oh, this is, I don't know if this is just a portrait of him just kind of floating, but yeah. I think it's finished. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that. Cool color harmonies. Nikki Phillips, working sketch. So you can see some of the um, writing of this, the ideas, kind of like what Shane Wolf does. So you wonder how people, you know, kind of get influenced by other people and then you start doing things and... I guess this is the finished work. Oh, it's finished work, okay. I wonder, um, I mean, are these commissions? Are these going to stay here? Or maybe these are like calling cards, right? So like for people, because yeah. This is like, um, you know what? So these are like calling cards. So this is where people come to say, I want this particular style. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We grabbed takeout lunch and we're gonna go sit in St. James Square. Such a gorgeous day. We have got, and obviously we are not alone. Seems to be what a lot of people are doing. Unfortunately, the city is kind of loud with sirens and a lot of like construction. Let's find a shady spot. We took the bus to the Tate Britain. So easy to be on that bus system. And this museum we got in for free because we weren't tricked. And I thought we there's a lot of um you know weird modern stuff, but we will oh, what is this? This looks familiar. Oh, Lawrence Alma Tadema. Yeah. Gosh. It definitely is smaller. If you look at it, it's, I'm going to say it's close to an 18 by 24. I mean, the details in here, def these are definitely paintings that take a while to look at. I do love how simple those figures are. I mean, it's just a hint of a face. So even though this is, I don't know, maybe what you would consider 
tight or you know lots of detail there's so many beautiful subtleties like a figure through the water you know is a lot grayer a lot more diffused softer than above the water This is kind of beautiful. I know that they've done posters, I think, where they've just had this figure right here all by itself. I know this painting is so much bigger than you think when you look at it in the books. So, Sergeant Carnation Lily Lily Rose painted 1885-86 because he did do this over months. It is interesting, you know, so much of the paintings that we see when they have lots of greenery, there's more of a warm tone warm background but this is definitely bluish it's a blue teal um maybe it's all relative maybe the lighter greens are much much more blue but it is definitely doesn't have the warm undertones that a lot of times you see with a garden scene it really does have a solidity of that blue through the whole thing And of course it looks so much bluer against this bright, bright crimson background. I was telling somebody the other day how I had done a um, copy of a sergeant at the Boston Museum of, I think it's the Boyd children, and I did the littlest girl lying that was sitting on the floor. And it was very surprising to me how much blue sergeant used, I think. You know, we all have our own color palettes, our own senses, and I had to keep adding, keep adding, keep adding blue to the dress, and it just is something that's what, you know, um, you know, doing master copies teaches you. Well, it is beautiful. I mean, really, when you see a whole room of paintings, right? Even this larger one, does it make you want to go look at it? Not really. So what is the larger composition? Oh, look at they have easels out. Um, you know, where do you go? Now this particular painting obviously is beautiful. Um, and, and maybe because we know the artist, we go towards it, but a lot of these paintings just don't have amazing light and dark patterns. This one, the color in the dress and the female is good, but I mean, look at Sargent. Does it, isn't that just the painting after this whole room? Isn't it Sargent the one that you would go towards? Now, Scott and I visited um, this Tate in 1993, if you can believe it. And so I don't really remember, I think I just remember seeing some water houses, maybe one really big sergeant. It's a purple wall. So it's fun to see these paintings again. This is the study, 1984.
of his like little face. I don't know what that's about. Maybe he was teaching somebody something. Isn't that interesting to like do one and then literally do it again? Like you want to know a story. Such odd contorted hands too. Dog, you know. Oh my god, you can tell the dog has like a ponytail or something coming off like over his eye. So simple. Very, very hard to see. I find it just very hard to stand, you know, and just kind of, I don't know, I don't know if I just need to sit. It's weird, like, I, it's hard for me to concentrate when I'm looking at paintings. Oh. So I think this is a show by Rossetti. No, I'm wrong. This is not a show I think they are having, but this is not the room. This is by John Everett Millay, Ophelia, 1851. show is just about, um, you know, a certain style painting, maybe a bunch of painters that were in a similar group or something. I never really read the info, so I'd be the worst to tell you about the history of anything. Sargent, um, a painting of Claude Monet by the Edge of the Wood, 1885. You can, I mean, it's really, it's just a study of what to leave out and to be confident with just simple shapes. It's always fun to look down hallways in museums. This is by Ethel Sands. It's called The Chintz Couch, 1910. And what I like about this is that it's on a, um, it's almost like a board or some kind of warm beige surface. And so everything is just painted with this blue. So it's just blue strokes. So it's really just greens or these teals on top of this kind of brown, almost like a brown paper bag surface. Yeah, it's oil paint on board. And then on top of it, they just did this light um, streak coming in from the window. I don't know, I, can't, I, just, I mean, the, the painting itself is, you know, uh, the subject matter is kind of boring, but um, I'm kind of interested in 
doing these opposites are extremely limited color palettes. So brown board, just this almost like radiant, literally. Hmm, I'm kind of interested in doing that. Some of the areas have these kind of ropes and it just says closed for maintenance. Not sure what that means, but um, there is a sergeant landscape, so I can't get very close to it, but it's just wonderful to see. Um, Val, something, I'm so far away I can't even read it, but it was done in 1908. This is Lavender Hill Street, just a few blocks from where we're staying. And the school is in this sort of behind the scenes um, industrial park warehouse thingy. And um, they have multiple rooms, like eight rooms, but this is their main room that we're gonna go to where I'm teaching. Such a great room. People got here super early. I just wanna do a quick little tour. I, they have some really amazing drawing teachers. Excellent teachers here. So we'll have one model on this side. And they have a whole other room for just um, still life teaching. And um, I guess these windows are north light. So we'll have a model over here. And Helen is someone I do Zooms with, which is so fun to see in person. And there's Anne, she's the lady who owns the school. And we'll have the model up here. So this is the street that we came up, you can see. So I think students, you know, get a code and they know how to get up here. Maybe I'll do some more filming. And they, she, there are some of their other rooms is in that building. So it is really spread out. So, and they, you see how they, they block the light. So that's always good when you have a room like this is to put lights underneath. See, and that way they can also have lights on for the students' work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is Scott's drawing. I love it, Scott. I love how you're being so high key inside and just doing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I love it how you're not going super dark in the face, and you're kind of exaggerating her hair a little bit, which is fun. And that's, you know. Maybe we're not the best um, example since we exaggerate sometimes, but so yeah. Time, time in school, yeah. I drew and drew everything. Here's my ghost-like mask, doing just like blues and whites, yeah, that's exciting. talking a yeah, lot that's exciting. about well, just courage. shape. Yeah. Oh, no. And here Ruth came, and Ruth is starting a profile. I'm so glad I'm forcing her to do a profile. This is the fun class, super nice people. It's kind of rainy and drizzly today, so is this not perfect timing to not be outside uh, sightseeing? Scott is going full tilt crimped. Super cool. He elongated the neck, just like we saw sergeants do. Scott, I feel like um, I feel like that is a little bit too light. A little too light. Light. Oh, that little spot. Yeah, yeah. little spot. I would just soften that, you know, just so I don't look in that eye too much. I like to. I always like to videotape me chastising Scott. It's such a nice thing. So I'm making her look like a blue crazy. And Ruth is doing a very sensitive. She normally doesn't do profiles, so she thought she would be a good example 
I was challenged. <laughs> she was challenged. But yeah, really nice. So, which painting were you inspired by at the museum yesterday? Uh, the uh, the study of Madame X. Oh, Madame X. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're nice. just yeah. yeah, complete with flat lighting and then just a little yeah into the shadow. I know. <laughs> so flat. So simple. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> So what are you working on? Um, so this is um, it's Italian linen. Linen, it's Bella Oh, and you it's said it's sunk in. Yeah, these these dogs they were really glossy. Like oh, this okay. Because you know that, like you know, Nancy and Richard, they would actually put their own um, surface onto canvas, mm -hmm. so things wouldn't sink in. And um, yeah, it takes a lot of time. Yes. Yeah. But no, I, I like how you're putting the dark in. Yeah. Great. Oh, good. Scott is doing a drawing first. That's nice. And I'm doing a very, very, very simple block in of a little robot face. I love this. Oh, well. No, no. I like people talking. It's like, we'll see if it, it actually starts to look like a female at the end. Wow. It will. You have, you have faith in me? I'm glad. <laughs> Aww. Thanks, Scott. Hey. I know. I hadn't seen this room yet, but this is, um, I guess, the room where students hang out at. Gosh, they really have a lot going on here. So, yeah. This is probably, yeah, where you can have coffee, tea, snacks. That's a beautiful drawing. Look at that painting. Oh, 1989. Cool. Okay. Oh, I guess a place you could put like, your purse or something. Isn't that good? It's a nice painting. Oh, Mark Chen. Yeah, they have a lot of good artists here. Anyways. There's a lot to see in this building. I don't know what else. See, the studio is way down at the very end. Rachel started a profile. Scott is doing it beautifully. He's keeping it very high key. He's giving her a lot more character than I am. And I'm. Very, very robotic, but hopefully a good lesson. That's what I'm hoping for. And there's my little paintings that I show as little examples. I'm not, I'm not trying to be fancy. So it's... Everybody is having a tea break, and I thought I'd come look at Scott's, and he is he is creating a little bit of a drama, like she's being slashed. But he's just trying to be artistic, I guess. Yes! Say, say hi to everybody. <laughs> lovely, lovely people painting with them, love it.
today is Monday after the workshop and we're going to the National Gallery. So we'll see what kind of paintings they have here. It's free, so we weren't tricked into paying, but ha, I'm joking. It's always a good donation. All right, just thought I'd show you the beautiful lobby. Rembrandt, Leonardo da Vinci, and who's that? Antonio Algarves? Sorry for my ignorance. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna see Fairy. Actually, this isn't bad. Queen Charlotte by Sir Thomas Lawrence. Oh, I mean, it's, it's actually quite nice. I don't think the video is showing it well because of the glare. But I'll just do a quick little pass just to show you what the museum looks like. And then I'll just do some close-ups if there's anything exceptional. They say possibly by Juan Batista Martinez del Mazo. Wow, that's a name. Died in 1667. Wow, that's actually very nice. I like it because you don't see too many times paintings where the whole eye socket is really, you know, in shadow. It's kind of a darkish room here. We're getting mainly our light just from a skylight, so you don't we don't have to you know worry about spotlights, but it is not really really bright. It's a really beautiful frame. This is painting Yeah, we were saying that the face was painting kind of modern. I wish I could get higher. And then this is um, Diego Velasquez. So this paint, this was painted in 1656. The king, um, this king is shown at the age of about 50. And it's probably the last portrait that Velasquez made of King Philip. I mean, yeah, the edges are so soft. Try and take a still photo to do. Well, sometimes still photos take better photos than the video. This is another painting by Velasquez done. They say it could be done over three or four years, so they think 1647 to 51. So they're just guessing. Yeah, so they don't really know, but yeah, the little cherub is painted so beautifully. Like, how did he know to do that? That's, that's the thing. Like, where was the leap in painting? Look at that reflection. So, so many times when you, you think about doing reflections in mirrors or glass or the water, always make sure that the reflection it's a little bit darker and much less, um, well, more soft, right? Softer edges to, for the illusion that it's a reflection. Oh yeah, Scott was saying that it was very unusual to do a female nude at that time. This is an earlier painting by uh, Velasquez of the king. So he's younger. Yep. So, oops, sorry. <laughs> See if there's anything else to show you. But no, the, this wall right here is a, is a really nice one. We came across this painting by Titian. And honestly, up close, when you look at it, it's, it's well done compared, you know, compared to a lot of paintings. It was done, you may have to go look at the date. But the design of the trees and the people it reminded me a lot of Maxwell Parish. You know, these 
old Renaissance painters got blue in their palettes, so then they were able to add blue. And so some of the animals are wonderful. And I wanted to show you these cute little leopards or cheetahs. No, they're cheetahs. Look at that expression. I love it. And this woman is quite nice. But I could tell by the way that the clouds were designed and the trees. Even this figure in the middle, I think that, I think Maxwell Parrish must have been very inspired. So this was done in 1520. This is by Giovanni Bellini, 1515. And I'm just really, first of all, he's quite talented, but also just his compositions are so contemporary and his backgrounds are very um, unique and relatively flat, meaning that it's not a, like a landscape or leading you into places. It's it's really all about the intimate portrait and then the background is just design or pure color. <laughs> I, I'm finding that I'm getting more and more attracted to some of these very colorful ancient well, Renaissance paintings. I saw the first beautiful ones that I loved in uh, Avignon. It really, really to me makes a lot of difference when you have color. I mean, look at the fabric. It's almost like the fabric on this boot is translucent, almost like wax paper. So I wonder, you, I don't know if they're leather, or you can tell he has a bunion right there. Oh my gosh, how fun. Um, but just yeah, the vibrancy of the colors and the detail, it really does look so modern. Yeah, I really like this. So this is by Jean Gossert. Um, painted this around 1510. I wish we could get up higher, but there are spotlights in here. It's, it's colorful, it's well painted, um, I mean the people are stylized but still well done. painting is actually quite beautiful. Of course, it's a little bit difficult to video, but the subtleties are lovely and it's a triptych. <coughs> These rooms are a little small, but um, there's another gorgeous sort of contemporary looking painting. This is Hans Holbein the Younger, done in 1526. Just these solid backgrounds and these kind of like two dimension and one dimension is, I don't know, it's so appealing. how light she is and how saturated the color is in the background. There is a, a famous painting right there. It's going to be hard to see. And it's always happened sometimes when the rooms are so small, you kind of feel like, do I even want to walk in there? It's very difficult to see this painting. <laughs> it's a frenzy of anything that's famous to get a close-up shot. But it is lovely, so you can understand why. It's exquisitely painted, the colors, the details. I love the shoes in the bottom left. The faces are done quite well. Everybody loves the little reflections of the painter and the, and the models in the mirror. It is, it is an interesting thing about human nature, though. I 
think this dog is exceptional. Well, getting into Franz Hall and Rembrandt, you can definitely see the influence of Sargent and how Franz Hall painted his clothes. Oh my God, look at the little tassels in the bottom of this man's coat. Oh, it's the it is the tablecloth. So this is um, Gerbrand van der Eckhout. I really have no idea how to say it, but um, it's actually pretty nice. This guy looks a little pale, but very well painted. And you can tell when you're in a room how certain paintings do stand out. The man on the left is quite nice, but the dog is the best. And just very, very nice still lifes, but to be honest, they're all done to such a finish that they're, they look decorative and beautiful, but nothing that makes you go towards it. But anyways, for me. So this is a Franz Hall, portrait 1640. This is a self-portrait. Um, he's 34 and it was done in 1640. This is the original painting that we saw the copy of at Trinity Hall Chapel. Um, so Artemisia something something painted about 1615, self-portrait as St. Catherine of Alexandria. So that's pretty cool. We have finally hit, I think, the 20th century. This is the Impressionist room. And um, it's actually quite nice to see this big, beautiful Monet. Yeah, that's kind of dramatic. Usually you don't see as much contrast in Monet's. So this was a 1907. Definitely more saturated color. And this one obviously is very, very high key. Such a wonderful surprise to see a Soroya. So they say that this is a new loan. Uh, Val Valencian uh, Fisherman, 1895. Yeah, what a great, I mean, look at, all, look at how the face stays in the shadow. A lot of times us painters, we want to look in there so much. This is a very, um, I think it's kind of an earlier painting for him. And it, uh, let's just say it's more tight or rendered with a lot more details. Whereas his later work, you see, you know, brighter colors, bigger brush strokes. This is another Soroya, and I don't think I've ever seen this in person. Sometimes when you see paintings in books, you the reproductions or sometimes you just don't recognize them. Now this painting was painting 15 years later than that one. So this is 1910 and it's just called The Drunkard in Zarus, which is funny. Okay. You can see the brushwork getting looser. We left Trafalgar Square, and so now we are just taking kind of like a side road 
which is just a beautiful park. I can tell that a lot of people, ooh, look at that beautiful sculpture. I don't know, let me walk over here for a second. We thought we would just take a little bit of a stroll to go see uh, Westminster Abbey, just the outside, because it's a huge place. That's beautiful. Look at a beautiful path. It's the most stunning day. And um, we thought instead of grabbing the bus right away, we will walk towards Westminster Abbey and pick up our bus there. This is Whitehall. So Whitehall is maybe their government? Is that where their parliament is? And I don't know, it just sounds like, it sounds like maybe that should be it. <laughs> I don't know. Just behind it. Very impressive. It seems like people are going in there. Huh, should we do that? Should we go in there? London and England gardens are definitely the prettiest we've seen ever since we've been traveling. They are dedicated master gardeners, so it's always nice to go to parks. We found out that we think that that area that people are walking through is just a walk through to get to Trafalgar. So we don't need to go there. But this is St. James Royal Park. There are beautiful swans on this little pond and I don't know if there's an undercurrent but we were seeing some of the swans go really really fast. This park is just gorgeous. It's very manicured. A beautiful place to visit. beautiful. These ducks look very peaceful, very protected. Oh my gosh, look at this. Scott is the swan whisperer. Oh my gosh, look at how beautiful they are. They're probably so used to getting fed. Oh my gosh. Look at them, they're just primping themselves, saying, look at me, I'm gorgeous. Scratching his little chest. Oh, this is so pretty. Did you see the ice one taking off? Yes, I did, I got to film it a little bit. Wow. Yeah, they're so big, aren't they? Oh, look at these, they're just, is that one? Oh, it's just one little, I don't know, is that a goose? Is that a duck? What is that? Oh my gosh, this is fun. They obviously are very protected in their lake. We don't care. We know you're not going to do anything to us. We're walking towards Westminster Abbey. And this will be the last thing we see. The beautiful facade before we get on the bus. Visiting inside is probably, you know, just a whole thing on its own. So probably too much, too overwhelming to try and do it this afternoon. We're walking towards the bus and West, Westminster Hall is right across the street. And it's, there's a lot of like um, construction and stuff, but you can kind of peek in here and see this doorway. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube videos. I love it when people write me about them and I have fun doing them. So I'm so glad that people are enjoying them. Please subscribe and follow me and Scott on our Instagram pages, our website, and also on our patreon.com forward slash Susan Lyon.